In our previous session, we already discussed energy. We revised the meaning of energy, units of energy, and the main two types of energy. We said energy is the ability to do work. So the unit of energy is joules or kilojoules. Also, we said energy is classified into two main types, transferred and stored. Transferred, it means transfers from one uh, point to another, from one object to another, from the source of energy to the receiver. Stored, it means it's within the object, stored in the atoms of the object. We said examples on transferred energy like thermal energy, electrical energy, light energy. And uh, we said examples on stored energy like kinetic energy, potential energy, chemical energy. They all are stored energy and also nuclear energy. We already uh, defined some and discussed some types like kinetic energy and potential energy. You can quickly remind me what do I mean by kinetic energy? What is kinetic energy? Yes, Jawad. It's the it's the, the energy which caused by motion. Bravo. Excellent. So kinetic energy, it's energy of moving objects. Uh, kinetic energy depends mainly on two factors. What they are? Kinetic energy depends on two factors. What they are? Someone else, not only Jawad, Yalla. Factors affecting kinetic energy. What does it depend on? Does it depend on height? Yes, Sarah al -Asmar. Mass and velocity. Yes, thank you mass and velocity. Even if you want to calculate kinetic energy, it's half times mass times velocity squared. So kinetic energy depends on mass and velocity. Okay, then we define potential energy. What is the meaning of potential energy? Potential energy. Yes, Celine? Um, it is the stored energy due to the position of the object. Yes, bravo. Thank you. So potential energy, it's stored energy due to position. Uh, potential energy, two types, what they are. Yalla, quickly. Types of potential energy. Yalla, someone else, not Sara. Yes, Ya Taha. Yes, teacher. Yeah, types of potential yes. energy. Uh, gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy. Excellent, Taha, thank you. So potential has two types, gravitational, so it depends on gravity, it depends on the height from the Earth's surface, elastic potential energy, which is for elasticity, for elastic objects, objects that they have the ability to retain their original shape after deforming forces has been removed, okay? And today we're going to start with the, another type of energy, which is thermal energy. So during today's session, we're going to discuss the following. And thermal energy, you will define thermal energy, list ways of heat transfer, describe each way, which is conduction, convection, radiation, and uh, we're going to discuss how to reduce heat loss. Let's start by defining thermal energy from the name thermal energy. So it's energy of what? Omar Ahmed. Uh, heat. Bravo. So it's energy of heat. Now, in physics, we have three main uh, terms we work with, which is thermal energy, temperature, heat. Temperature, it's the average kinetic energy of particles. Thermal energy, uh, it's the total kinetic and potential energy of all of the particles in an object. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy. So, thermal energy is the total energy stored in the particles of matter. Total energy, so I'm talking about kinetic and potential energy together, stored in the particles of matter. So, because it's energy and all types of energy, 
uh, they have the same unit, so the unit of thermal energy is joules. Also, it can be measured with kilo joules. Okay, now temperature, which is the average kinetic energy of particles. So when we take a reading, we're actually taking a reading of temperature by using thermometers. We're not measuring thermal energy. We're measuring temperature. To find out thermal energy, we do calculations, okay? It's a very important point that when we use the thermometer to find out uh, the temperature, we only finding kinetic energy, we only finding temperature, not thermal energy, okay? Now, temperature usually measured by Celsius, but also we can use it or measure it with Kelvin or Fahrenheit, okay? Of course, we can convert between different units, which you're going to learn in the coming years. So again, thermal energy is the total energy, total, I mean, kinetic and potential, stored in the particles. Temperature, it's the average kinetic energy. So which one do you think is going to be higher? Thermal energy of an object or the temperature? If I'm doing calculations and um, measurements, which is going to be higher, temperature or thermal energy? Yes, Celine. Uh, thermal. Bravo, thermal. And why is that? Because it is the total of the both energies, the potential and the kinetic. Yes, thank you, Celine. Bravo. So, now let's see how thermal energy transfer. In front of you, you have a figure or a diagram shows the three ways of heat transfer which they known as conduction, convection, radiation. Now let's start by them. Let's start with the first way of transfer, which is transferred by conduction. And remember, I told you conduction, it means contact. Okay, so in conduction, I'm talking about a direct transfer by direct contact between two objects. Now, how heat transfers? Does it transfer from hot to cold or from cold to hot? What do you think? Do you think hotter objects gets colder because they are in contact with cold objects or the opposite? How heat transfers from hot to cold or cold to hot? Yella, other, other students. Yes, through up. Uh, from hot to cold. Okay. Do you know why, Rua? Because uh, due to the particles' motion. Yeah, due to the particles' motion. Hot objects, they have higher energy. Think of it as that. We just said thermal energy. It's the energy, kinetic and potential, both together. So hot objects, their particles have higher energy. So their particles are vibrating faster. In conduction, mainly I'm talking about heat transfer from solid to solid, okay? Or maybe solid with direct contact with a liquid, only the part of liquid that is in contact with the solid, okay? But generally we use it for solids. So particles, with higher thermal energy, they're vibrating faster. So they will collide with neighboring particles transferring energy. So conduction is transfer of heat from hot to cold. Now, since I'm talking about transfer of heat in solid, so actually we have two types of materials according to conduction. The first type, which is any object that allow heat to pass through. So conductors are objects that allow heat to pass through them easily. And we said that all metals are good heat conductors. The other type of objects, insulators. Insulators are objects that do not allow heat to pass through them easily, like wood and plastic and non-metals in general, okay? So according to conduction to conductivity, objects can be classified into two groups, conductors, insulators. Conductors allow heat to pass through, 
insulators insulate or prevent heat from passing. Now, a question. Why metals are good conductors? Who knows the answer? Why metals are good conductors of heat? Actually, metals are good conductors of heat and electricity, and that's because of the same reason. Yes, Rama? Because they have mobile electrons. Thank you, Rama. So, metals are good conductors of heat and electricity, and that's because all metals have metallic bonds. And in metallic bonds, I'm talking about three electrons. Metals have mobile electrons or free electrons. So because they are free electrons, they have the ability to move. So they can just move and carry the heat, carry electricity with them. And here we're talking about electricity. So metals, they have mobile electrons, free moving electrons. Also, we call them delocalized electrons. So the free electrons, they have the ability to move, so they can carry heat from one point to another. Now, let's go or let's discuss how conduction happens. So if I give you this option, let's discuss how heat transfers through the frame pan here, through the pan, through the solid. You can give me exactly a steps how conduction happens how heat transfers through solids in detail, step by step. Yes, yes, Eileen, go ahead. Um, when, when the solid is heated, its particles, they gain energy and they vibrate faster, then they collide with the neighboring particles, causing them to vibrate faster as well, which transfers the heat through the solid. Amazing answer, thank you, Celine. So, as she said, this is how conduction happens. When solid is heated, its particles gain energy. So what kind of energy? Kinetic energy. So they start to vibrate faster and then they collide with neighboring particles, causing them also to vibrate faster. So this transfers heat from one point to another. So this process is gonna continue to happen till all of the particles have the same energy and then the heat transfers stops, okay? Here I have another diagram shows transfers of energy between objects. So block A has higher temperature than block B. Once you put them in contact, the particles here in contact, particles in B block, that in contact with A, they start to collide with particles of A. So heat starts to transfer from A to B. And this continue to happen till A and B have the same temperature. In this case, we said we reach thermal equilibrium, which means that the temperature here is balanced. So the heat transfer won't continue forever. Once the two objects have the same energy, the same temperature, the transfer of heat stops, okay? Clear? Now, convection. You can tell me about convection. What do I mean there uh, with convection? What it happens? Does it happen in solid, uh, in liquid, gases, or in all of them? Convection. Okay, someone else, shall I choose? Yellow boys. Mm, what do you think? How convection happens? Akram, do you know the answer? You don't have a mic, Akram? Okay. Sarah. Go ahead, Sarah. It is the transfer of heat through the fluids, which is liquid and gas. Convection transfers of heat through fluids, solids and gases. Yes, Sarah, thank you. 
So convection happens only through liquids and only through gases. Now in convection, we said that the particles, they start to vibrate. They don't leave their position. I'm talking about solid. So particles are held in position. So particles in solid, they start to vibrate in position, colliding with neighboring particles, transferring heat. In convection, <coughs> it's totally different. In convection, I'm talking about movement of the whole fluid. How that happened? Now, let's look at this diagram. In this diagram, the lower part here in the bottom is in direct contact with the heat source. So this part of the liquid is going to gain energy, kinetic energy. The particles start to move away from each other, which actually causes the density of this part to decrease. Hot liquids and gases, they have less density than cold liquid and gases. So the part in contact with the heat, its particles start to gain energy, kinetic energy, move away from each other, which reduces density. Remember, density, mass over volume. So if I have less particles, I have less mass, so I have less density or lower density. So this is the scenario here. What's gonna happen that the part of the liquid that in direct contact with the heat is going to gain heat, temperature increases, particles moving away from each, from each other, reducing density. Now, because it has less density, so it's going to move up or to rise. The upward part of the liquid has higher density, so it sinks. So this is going to continue to happen also till all of the liquid, all of the gas have the same temperature, have the same temperature. So in convection current, I'm talking about the movement of the whole part of the liquid. The whole part that has high temperature is going to rise, and the other part with colder temperature, lower temperature, it sinks down. So I'm talking about movement, about the current here. High density up, the low density down. Okay, so this is the convection current. This is what's happening in liquids and gases. Do you have any question here? Any question? So this is the main difference between convection and current, again, uh, and sorry, and conduction. Conduction particles, they stay in position, they only vibrate faster colliding with neighboring particles, and the process goes in sequence till the temperature transferred through the whole liquid, uh, sorry, the whole solid. In convection, the whole liquid or gas that has high temperature is going to move. Okay, so I'm talking about movement of the liquid or gas. Again, convection current particles in direct contact with the heat, they gain kinetic energy. So they vibrate faster away from each other, they move away. Uh, they don't vibrate, they move. So they move away from each other, lowering mass, which lowers density. So the part with high temperature rises up and the part with low temperature, which means low density, uh, high density, sinks down. Okay? When a fluid is heated, gas or liquid, its density decreases since it's less dense than the surrounding then floats upwards. The movement of a fluid that carries energy from a warmer place to a cooler one is called convection current. Here another example of convection current. Now, as we said, in convection, energy is transferred through a material. The movement of the material from one place to another in conduction just by particles vibration. Okay? okay. The third type of transfer of energy, which happens through distance. It doesn't require the presence of liquids or uh, gases. It doesn't require any particles to vibrate, any contact, which we call it what? Who knows what we call the third way of heat transfer? On. Yalla. Yes, hala. 
Ya da yaraman ne? Radiation. Radiation. Bravo. Why do we call it radiation? Why radiation? Who knows? Why radiation? Why not any other name? Why not the... Any other name? <laughs> I don't have a, like an exact name, but why exactly radiation? Yes, Jawad? Because it transfers by light. Bravo, by rays. Excellent. Thank you, Jawad. Bravo. We call it radiation because heat here transfers as rays of heat. Okay? Now, a radiation, heat transfers from the heat source through vacuum through empty space or even through gases. And it happens through space and it happens through uh, air, through gases. But the heat transfers not by vibration, not by the movement of the fluid. It transfers as rays of energy, okay, as waves. That's why we call it radiation. So radiation, I'm talking about waves. Energy, it's carried by waves. Now, you know that from the sun, we're receiving different type of waves, radiations. We have microwaves, x-ray, <clears throat> gamma, ultraviolet, visible light, and uh, many other ways. The part of uh, like the electromagnetic spectrum that is responsible on transferring heat, it's infrared wave, okay? Infrared wave. So the infrared wave, it's the part responsible on carrying heat. Now, let's look at the characteristics of infrared waves. Infrared ray, uh, waves, it's produced by warm or hot object, not necessarily the sun, so any hot object radiates, radiates heat, a form of electromagnetic waves, it travels through both vacuum and air. Of course, it's invisible to your naked eye, and it only travels in a straight line. Why only travels in a straight line? Because it's electromagnetic spectrum, just like light. You remember that we studied about light, and we said uh, light has rectilinear propagation property, which is movement in a straight line. Also, infrared waves, they have the same property, which is rectilinear propagation, which means they only move in straight line. Okay, so this figure shows the three ways of heat transfer, convection, convection, radiation. Radiation from the heat source to the pan, convection within the liquid, and conduction from the pan hand to the person. So, we just said that hot objects absorb, uh, sorry, uh, radiate or they give out heat. Any object or whenever I have radiation, radiation make it absorbed, reflected by the object. Or maybe the object itself it emits heat. So according to that, we classified objects into three groups, absorbers, emitters, reflectors. Yellow, remind me, what the meaning of absorbers? Or what do I mean that the object is a good absorber? Yellow, absorbers, what they do? Do they uh, give out heat? Do they produce heat? Yes? Yes, Sidin? They absorb heat. Yes, bravo. They absorb heat. So they take in the heat. Yes, bravo. So absorbers from the name, absorbers absorb. So do you know any, um, before we discuss that, what do I mean by emitters? Yeah, emitters. Yes, Jawad? The teacher does not absorb heat. Yeah, so what they do? They give out heat. They give okay. out. Yes, emits. Bravo. Okay. Uh, reflectors. Reflectors. Hello, Ani. You raised your hand before. 
Yes, yeah, Halawani. Where are you here? Yeah, yes, Halawani. What do you think? They give out heat. Okay, so they are source of heat or they only bounces back heat, reflects heat. They bounce back heat. That's the problem. So for reflectors, I'm sorry here. Wait. Okay. So to know if the object is an absorber, emitter, or reflector, <laughs> it depends on the object and uh, it depends on its surface and on its color, what type of material I'm talking about. So it's the surface that determines whether an object absorbs a reflector of infrared radiation. A surface that is a good reflector, so it's going to be a poor absorber. So if it reflects heat, it's not going to absorb, okay? And a good absorber of heat, it's a good emitter. Why is that? Because it absorbs heat, it means it has a high temperature. And we said hot objects, they emit heat, they give out heat, they release heat as radiation. So keep this in mind. A good absorber, it's a bad reflector. Okay? A, uh, a good absorber, it's a good emitter. Uh, one minute. Okay. Can you give me examples of good absorbers and good emitters? Like what? Good absorbers and good emitters. What do you think? Only Celine? Yeah, yes, Celine. Um, any black objects? Okay, good. So a black object is going to be a good absorber and in the same time, a good emitter of heat. Bravo, Yasmin. Tayyip, uh, a good reflector. Taha. Teacher, white color. Yes, bravo. White color or shiny surfaces in general, they all are good reflectors. Okay, so usually metals are good reflectors of heat. So in here, I have this diagram. Look at the diagram. If the object is dull black, so it's a really good absorber of heat and it's a really good emitter of heat. Now I move to shiny black. It's a little bit less absorber, so less emitter. White, it's a good reflector, bad absorber and emitter. Silver, it's a very good reflector of heat. So it's a very bad absorber okay clear questions before i continue with ways to reduce to reduce heat do you have any questions about what we just discussed do not okay yeah so how can i reduce heat loss we just that heat transfers at conduction conduction convection radiation so actually, there is a lot of ways, millions of ways to lose heat. Sometimes what is required is to keep heat, especially, for example, during winter. If I'm using heat uh, sources to just heat my house, I don't want to lose this heat because it's going to cost a lot and it uh, takes a lot of material. So how can I reduce heat loss? And also, if I want to prevent heat to get like during summer, I want to keep my house cold, so I want to prevent heat from entering the house. So how can I have or to reduce heat loss? In here, I want you to give me examples how to reduce heat loss in houses, like this. Yeah, Yalla, any example? What can you do? What do you do during summer and winter to reduce heat loss? Sarah al Asmar. Double glaze the windows. Okay, bravo. Double glazing for the windows, which reduces. Reduces what, Sarah? Heat loss. Bravo. Reduces heat loss as both actual radiation and as conduction. So I have another way. Another way. Look at this diagram. Another way to reduce heat loss. 
Mm. We can lose it through walls. So what to do? Huda. Yes, Huda. Um, so we can, uh, Mom is what? Okay, sorry. Um, miss, we can uh, cover the drops yeah. in the door. Excellent. Bravo, excellent. Yalla, another example. What to do also. So we can cover the drops. What also? What can we do? Yes. Yalla, Yalla, uh, Put carpets. Yes, use carpets. Carpets, they going to reduce heat loss through the floor. Bravo. Also, we can use yes, CD here. We can fit drop excluders. Yeah, I know I need to drop excellent CD. So many ways to reduce heat loss. You mentioned a lot of them. Like this, we can just fit the cavities with the insulators. Uh, we can cover the drop excluders like here. We can use curtains. We can use carpets to reduce heat loss. Also, we can uh, use uh, foam or insulation in the roof. In this way, we can just reduce heat loss, whether to prevent heat from moving from inside to the outside or from outside to the inside. Now, here, other examples to reduce heat loss, especially in this uh, bottle, like here, we use double glazing. We cover the inside with silver coating. Why silver? Because it's going to reflect heat back to the liquid. Uh, also here we have vacuum and the vacuum prevents heat uh, loss by convection. Also this topper which can prevent evaporation 